bring over to Haman. He was listening to Haman's advice and Haman said, let's kill all the Jews. But then at some point he, he handed his authority or his counsel over to Esther who came in and said, uh, you know, stop this and this is a terrible thing, don't do this. And then Ahasuerus listened to her. And I will tell you, there are people that are advising the president of the United States right now that have an agenda behind it and is an unbiblical agenda and it's a deadly agenda. And I want you to see this. Rahm Emanuel's brother, Ezekiel Emanuel, he is what is called, and I want to come up here to the screen here. I want to point this out to you. He is what is called a communitarian. Now, if you think that sounds like communism, it does. And it sounds like communism for a reason. And I want to ask you this morning, does anybody here want to see communism inside this country? No, you'd be an idiot if you did. Communism is an unbiblical form of government. And I'm going to show you, I want to show it to you from the Bible that socialism and communism are unbiblical forms of government. God did not design man to live that way. But a communitarian, I want you to, in fact, I'm going to read this. President Obama's chief advisor on health care is Ezekiel Emanuel. Health care bill. We just passed a health care bill. Who advised the president on the health care bill? There was a lot of groups, but Ezekiel Emanuel was one of the advisors that formed what this health care bill is all about. Uh, he's the brother of the White House chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel. In addition to Dr. Emanuel being a trained oncologist, um, he is also an avowed communitarian, listen to this, who advocates health care rationing. That means that if they don't think you should get the health care, you won't get the health care. This is the thinking, this is the communitarian thinking behind the health care bill. In February 2009, he was tapped by the administration to work on the formulation of a national health care strategy. Officially, Dr. Emanuel is a special advisor to the director of the White House Office of Management and Budget for Health Policy. In February, Lynn Sweet of Chicago sometimes reported that he is working on the health care reform effort. He is detailed to the OMB spot and is still officially an employee of the National Institute of Health. In other words, this guy is the architect of the health care movement that is going on. And it just started with the bill that was shoved through Congress. And it's going to be expanded from there because we know that Congress and the White House does not believe that you just pass a law and leave it lay. Five years from now, they're going to add to it. Two years from now, they're going to add to it. And it's just going to keep building and building and building. And it has as its goal a communitarian idea. And I'm going to show you what that means. Well, maybe I'll turn this on. Maybe that'll help us. All right. All right. Now. His views aren't limited to this. Let's see. The Bible says he wrote a short article for the Hastings Center in which he expounded upon the role that communitarianism might play in health care. Dr. Emanuel's bioethical views are heavily fueled by adherence to this philosophy of communitarianism. Briefly put, communitarianism is a fairly new political philosophy that emphasizes the role of the community in defining and shaping individuals. In other words, what everybody comes to in a consensus on what should be, that's what should be. And that is not biblical. God never left it up to the church to decide what the doctrines of the faith were going to be. God directed those doctrines. Can I hear you say amen? The founding fathers did not ask King George's opinion about what their new government should be. They decided based upon the word of God what it should be. The, the church does not tell God what to believe or, or tell anybody else. The community does not decide what's right. That is the idea of what's called mob rules. Whoever is the mob and whoever is, is the greatest, they're the ones that decide that's right. And I want, let me explain this. Just because a majority votes to do something, that does not make that right. That's what communitarianism is. Just because the community says that this is right, that does not make it right. The community of Crystal City allowed a pornography shop over here in their city limits. That does not make it right. Can I hear you say amen? That's what communitarianism is. Now watch this. Communitarianism focuses on the need to balance individual rights. That's the freedoms that you have. And interest with that of the community as a whole. And that individual people are shaped by the cultures and values of their communities. In this article, he infamously declared, listen to his exact quote. Services provided to individuals who are irreversibly prevented from being or becoming participating citizens. Ezekiel Emmanuel said, and I'm glad these guys are here this morning, that Stan is not a capable participating citizen of the United States of America. 
And since he cannot contribute, since Stan cannot work in a factory and build a car or climb up an electrical pole or hang drywall or check out service at a, at a mercantile shop, since he cannot do that, he is not a participating citizen and they're not, and are not basic and should not be, their, their, their rights and services are not basic and should not be guaranteed. An obvious example is not, now this is Ezekiel Emmanuel's own words. An ex- obvious example is not guaranteeing health services to patients with dementia. In other words, let them die. Now who in here agrees with the principles of communitarianism? I don't. I think it's an atrocity that we have men who are running our country that believe this nonsense. Amen. This is sick. Okay? This is not a biblical form of government. Communitarianism is communism in a different wrapper. And it basically says the whole community has to be all working together. And it, and it takes away from your individual rights. And your individual responsibilities. And your individual allowances. The New York Times said Obama is a communitarian. The New York Times said this. The New York Times is favoring Obama. They said Obama is a communitarian. He believes you can only make profound political changes if you first change the spirit of the community. Listen to what that is. President Clinton said Obama's election was the first one in which people were self-consciously communitarian. Understanding, watch what, watch what he said. Understanding we are going to rise and fall together. That also is not biblical. The Bible says that there are going to be people who will fall in the last days. That doesn't mean that everybody has to fall in the last days. God's going to find some people that it's not going to fall. That's going to be against the community. And we're going to stand. Amen. You know, as individuals. But that's what communitarianism is. We're going to rise and fall together. We live in an interdependent nation and an interdependent world. But that is not what they signed on July 4th, 1776. That's not what they signed. They signed that we are now free and independent states. That we're not going to stand with the community of King George. We're not going to be like the Europeans. We are going to be us. Bethel Church doesn't want to be like First Baptist, Second Baptist, Faith Baptist, Assembly of God, Nazarene. Bethel Church doesn't want to be like anybody else. We want to be like us. Amen. Amen. And if we were going to have a church like everybody else, then why don't we just disband and go to all the other churches? But we're not part of the community. God has given us a choice. And if they want to go one way, that's fine. God tells us to go a different direction. And that's what we're going to do. Can I hear you say amen? Okay. Now, this picture was taken of Barack Obama while he was running for president. He was fixing to get on a plane. And he has a book in his hand called The Post-American World. It was a book written describing what is going to happen in the world when America collapses. And it's favorable to the collapse of America. The change, the transformation that he ran for office on was detailed in that book. This is what he stands for. This same concept is in the church. How many of you have ever seen this community church? There are community churches everywhere. Everybody is renaming their church community church. Now, a hundred years ago, a community church was, that was the church in that community. There was a little town and there was a little church in there and everybody went to the same church because horses can't run 35, 40 miles to go to church on Sunday morning. And so you rode five miles into town and you went to the only church that was in that community. That's what it used to mean. Today, all the churches now are changing their names over to the community church. That's because the spirit of communitarianism now exists in the church. And I don't have time to explain all this, but let me wrap it up in the, in the state, in the state.